back to the channel. So before I get into the video, I'd like to thank my new subscribers. I, I think you guys are mainly from the Facebook community, uh, mainly the Prepper and Survivalist community. I really appreciate you guys for recently subscribing. Um, I think I'm almost 200. I think that's really awesome. So we're going to get into the video. So today we're talking about communication for Survivalist slash Prepper. Now my last video that dealt with communications, we talked about the Garmin Rhino 755T. Now in that video, we had a limited range. You all know because in order to have the maximum range for the Rhino, the GMRS network, you need to have a GMRS license. So, but I was wondering, is it possible to have a hand radio that has the ability to go from maybe state to state, or maybe 50 or 60 miles, or maybe have a radio that has the ability to even transmit from country to country or continent to continent? So Kenwood came up with a handy talkie that has the ability to transmit at long distance as well as other forms of ways to communicate. Now, through researching on the ham community, many people suggested that you start off with maybe a lot cheaper ham radio and then work your way up to something more complicated or a little bit more complex. I didn't really want to do that. I kind of just set out for the best ham radio that's out on the market today. And it was a consensus of the ham community that this particular radio is the best handy talking hands down. So God so with no more delay, I'll be introducing the Kenwood THD-74. Basically, my first impressions of this radio when it, when it arrived, um, I thought it was pretty small, but once I held it in my hand, it seems extremely compact. It doesn't seem cheap at all. Um, it has a good bit of weight to it. I don't know the exact weight, but I made sure that I have um, some specs and a lot of the features um, imposed on the screen for you guys. Um, but basically, uh, this is what you get. Um, obviously, you get a charger, uh, whatnot. Um, if we look to the right uh, of the radio, uh, you have these flaps where you just kind of open up right here and this is for your uh, headphones and your uh, mic system uh, not only that you have your micro SD slot right here and you have your USB here uh, if you want to go ahead and connect to a computer and then you also have your uh, DC connection for uh, your power cord um, I definitely suggest as soon as you get this radio, as soon as it comes in, you go ahead and you program it. Um, there are uh, there is a website. Tap the link at the bottom where you guys can go ahead and click, and you can just download everything you need uh, to your computer, and then have this link directly to your computer uh, to go so you can go ahead and download um, everything you need to get started. So right here, um, this would be your own button. Um, this is the squeeze the squatch. I forgot how you pronounce that button there. This is your push to talk. Um, guys, please remember, um, if you have a ham radio, you can listen, but you cannot transmit without having um, a ham radio license. So, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and power it on. Okay, so right now I have mine in voice, command modes, backlighting, um, all the keys light up so you'll be able to see it in the dark or whatnot. I think the LCD screen is uh, color. Um, the, bo the bottom knob would be your volume. The ability to have dual, dual band mode and single band mode. So basically, press the F key and then you press the A, B, C. And then you're, you're, you're in single band mode in F key and now you're in double band mode. Awesome. You want to go back and you want to switch through the, the bands, you just uh, hit A, B, it goes right through. Going through the menu, options. You have a lot of different options here. Um, you have satellite, which is uh, GPS. You have the option to track different satellites that's hovering above. You also have uh, you, al you also have a uh, FM radio broadcasting if you want to listen to the radio station. Now, what's awesome about this, if you're listening to the radio station and you happen to get a call, the radio will basically uh, silence itself to allow you to get that call. Any other feature that you're doing on this radio, on, on this particular unit, the, the FM radio 
uh, signal will basically silence itself while you're getting um, uh, while you're performing another operation. Um, you have access to get to your SD card here. Uh, this is your APRS, which I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, your memory, where you can program all your presets and whatnot, and then audio file if you want to go ahead and record uh, some of your conversations that you're having um, on the radio, and then uh, digital, which is D Star, and we'll get to that in a second. And then you have your configurations, your options. This radio has the ability to scan, uh, so just by pushing the VFO button, then the radio automatically starts scanning, um, looking for uh, bands, uh, looking for channels, so you can go ahead and listen into. It's in GPS function, um, but you can basically toggle on and off. Um, like I said earlier, you have the GPS satellite information where you can see all the different satellites. Let's go ahead, I'm going to take a look at that and see if I can do that for you guys. So we'll just push the function key and the mark key. And that would get you to the GPS screen. And when you just toggle to the right, you can actually see the satellites hovering above. All right, and this is the satellite so you guys can see hovering above or hovering in my vicinity. Position memory. A position memory list and you have target point easy for you to save different locations that you're going to get to without a problem as ARPS something I forgot to mention about this radio is tri-band so um, there's a lot of different ways to communicate oh, is the APRS data communication now this function uses APRS format for data communications including your, your station position messages etc and data is received from another station directly via digger Peters or a I gate station the direction of the received station from your station's perspective their distance and their grid square locator is displayed any comments sent by the other stations are also displayed the APRS is automatic packet reporting system it's a worldwide system introduced by Bob Berninje now the way the APRS network works is you'll be using the first a digit peter. Now the digit peter is a digital repeater. It relays digital packet data. When a digit peter receives a packet, it saves it to the memory. When a reception ends, the packet data is retransmitted on the same frequency using digit peters. It is possible to exchange APRS packages long distance. The second option on the APRS network is an I gate. Now I gate is an internet gateway. It's very useful and important feature of the APRS as well as a digit peter. The iGate stations bridge APRS packets between RF and our internet by going to the iGate stations. You can enjoy the communication with the further distant stations which are not covered only by digit peter. You can do any of these things. You have to have a call sign assigned to you and the only way to get a call sign is to take a test um, and get your license. With using these Kimwood radios in conjunction with the APRS, you can transmit a APRS beacon using that. Uh, you also have a station list. It displays examples of uh, mobile stations. Radio using APRS even has a message function. You can receive messages and you can also transmit messages using APRS. You have the capability of just storing user phrase, generic phrases in there. Good morning, good afternoon, hey, how you doing? Where's your, uh, what's your 20, you know, basically where you located. Um, be home soon, love you, things like that. You can have pre-programmed the ability to use D-Star. Now D-Star, the original D-Star is digital smart technologies for amateur radio playing. J-A-R-L envision a system of repeaters grounded together into zones. Now the D-Star the repeater enables you to call the D-Star station in another area through the internet. The transceiver can be operated in a digital voice mode including low speed data operation for both transmit and receive. That's what they're basically trying to do if I understand this correctly. They're trying to get the system to work that basically you can just put in a person's call sign and be able to call them directly um, over the internet. They have the ability to use uh, Bluetooth um, to appear with a mobile hotspot, a personal computer, a DVAT, and a power block in, in order to power your, uh, your DVAT, you uh, transmit on D-Star anywhere in the world. You can be in your car. As long as you can get an internet signal strong enough to your hotspot, you will have the ability to do so. I promise you guys, as soon as I get uh, my ham radio license, this is one of the first things I want to do. I want to go ahead and make a couple of calls for you guys to actually see um, how I do it and what's the process um, to make it happen. As soon as I get my, my ham radio license, I'll make sure that the first time I do my call sign, I'll make sure the camera's there so you guys can see. Also, when I do my first uh, call sign using um, D-Star, as well as APRS um, text, uh, my first 
email message, all the capabilities, whatever this radio can do. The next time I do a review on it, I will, without a doubt, have my hand radio license, and then we're going to get a little bit more in depth. So as always, guys, I really appreciate you taking out the time to watch the video. Um, if there was anything that I said that was at least good informative, please hit the like button. If you hadn't already, please subscribe and definitely uh, comment. I love getting those things. I definitely respond to any comment that I get. So that being said, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.